Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, outer space. Space, space, space. Hope you enjoy. Story number one. Human subject, Zen Chu Yon. Written by Sysanic. If you will see here, xenobiologist teacher Drackle for Ken Gained explained with a pointer stick on a holographic display of his 206 students in the auditorium. The Homo sapien has a thin membrane of tissue underneath the skin layer. It'll all be almost film-like in density, so don't slice too hard, otherwise you'll damage the muscle layer below it. He used his pointer to slice away at the diagrammed chest area of a human, revealing a pectoral muscle group. And in some cases, the muscle may be larger than average from activities or profession when the subject was alive. He zoomed out, the display splitting into several different shaped human bodies. Like our species, they had scientists, lawyers, soldiers, mothers, fathers, rich, poor, all different shapes and sizes for all manners of trade. He trailed off as he stared at the armored human shape. Rifle in hands, as opposed in a firing stance. Snapping back to reality, he turned to the mess of students as they all donned face masks and surgical gowns. The auditorium moved like a layered discs, separating the students into groups as a surgical table rose in front of each collection of them. From the side of the room came a dozen cryogenically frozen tubes with frost-lined subjects in them. Before you will be a human from various time periods, with some subjects being almost two millennia old, he chuckled to himself. <laughs> so, uh, please, be cautious with them. They're old. Saying that, they're very dead, too. I wouldn't bring a live human in here. Goodness, imagine that, what that savage would do if it woke up. But finally, please enjoy yourself so you may now commence your final examination of the semester. The students laughed with him gently as they opened their cryo-frozen humans and let the cryopods in built mechanical arms lay their subject upon the surgical table before them. Some of the humans were evidently male or female and wore a variety of clothes. One had surgical-looking blue set of clothes on and a face mask similar to one the students wore. Another one, a full set of olive green uniform with a thin metal helmet on its head, a wood and steel firearm slung by its side. Another human, a fresher, larger one, wore a thin bodysuit that mimicked the human's muscle structure. The students began expertly removing the clothes of the humans, cutting along clothing seams and such like to make their medical practice as clean as possible. From the rear of the class, a small group of students looked at their human as it stood in its cryopod. It wore a banded armor torso piece and had a head-covering helmet that carried a red plume that ran vertical along the crown. The red tunic covered what the armor didn't, and a pair of the students ran a check on the fabric. Cotton trousers, that to close sandals. A short sword was frozen to his hip in a scabbard, and it was probably the largest subject of the class. Sir, one of the students said, how cryo-machinery cannot lift this human. Dreckel paced up to the group and let out a curious gasp. The censure, Yon, a rare class of human. They're the oldest of our subjects, actually. Dreckel explained as he carefully placed his gloved hand on the human's chest armor. It's reported that he was picked around 2,051 human years ago and had been pretty much forgotten about until I found him today. He looked to the students. You're lucky. He's going to make a fascinating... Dreckel stopped as a hand grabbed his. He span on his heel and immediately looked at the human subject. He was staring back with an embossed helmet and snarling beast and behind it, a very live human. He went to say something, but he was silenced as another fist buried itself in his face. He was sent reading, his students immediately screaming and fleeing from their table. The human subject, the Centurion, climbed uneasily from the cryogenic pod and fell to his knees, breathing heavily as he gained his bearings. The rest of the class turned at their tables in both confusion and fear. Obey some! The human gasped as his lungs fully defrosted, followed by the rest of his internal organs. The students, who were more savvy with what was happening, began recording the human with their wrist-mounted social devices, both for scientific discovery and to use for their final case study. Qu-us! The human shouted, backing away from the whimpering teacher and stunned students. 
The human snatched the sword at his hip and pulled it from the scabbard in one motion, standing with it ready. Obi S. Legionum! He barked as the students began to close in on him to drag their teacher away from the startled human. Get the campus security! Greco cried out. Don't get near the human! Silentium! The human barked out once more, pointing the sword at the nearest student. Obey some! The students encroached closer in an almost giddy curiosity, and the human could back it up no further. In a flash, it propelled itself forward, the sword plunging into one of the students, crashing their chest instantly and almost pinning them to the floor. Before the sword was ripped free and swung at the closest students, the student's mood went from excitable to sheer terror as the classmates were cut down with merciless efficiency at the hands of a freshly defrosted human warrior. The human shouted in its harsh language as it killed, every now and then stopping by one of the frozen cadavers and trying to awaken them with a shake before realizing that they were dead and moving on to kill more students. A large handful had escaped and had been replaced with shock baton wielding security guards. In Imicus, the human barked as he leapt at the security guards. Seventeen Earth minutes and double as many security guards later, the human subject was pacified. It was dragged unconscious to the cryogenic laboratory in several restraints and placed back into cryogenic freezing, still smeared with the blood of alien students it had killed. With the restraints still attached, the pod was closed and the human refrozen for later evaluation. The lead cryogenic scientist leader looked at the frozen subject as Frost caked the armor and helmet. He pressed a few buttons on the panel to his front and looked at the personnel file. You're the first human who's even woken from cryogenic freezing, he said, staring at the snarling beast embossed on the human's helmet. Two thousand years old, and they can't spell your name correctly, he commented as he deleted Centurion and replaced it with the correct term. There we go, Centurion. End of story. Story number two. If you are listening to this, you are the resistance. Written by British Tea Company. They've been here for a long time and taken everything from us. Our freedom, our liberty, and now they've started taking our friends and family. So many friends and loved ones have perished in their initial invasion. And now they're being taken in the night and never seen again. We... Don't even know what the aliens are doing with them. If you are fighting, if you are hiding, if you are running, then know that you are not alone. There are pockets of us fighters who have banded together, and though they've got us outfought and outmanned, we have one key advantage over them. This is our home, and unlike them, we're willing to bleed and die for what is ours. As you're listening to this, my voice is being broadcasted over every secure radio channel and every free settlement. The aliens have taken much, but they haven't taken everything quite yet. It is now our duty as the one still free to continue to fight. It is our responsibility with our freedom to make sure everyone else gets there. For those in the cities, this starts... With you. If you are in the cities, you need to get out now. You are not safe. The aliens have set up checkpoints all throughout the cities to prevent you from escaping. But tonight, there will be a timed power outage that will last for roughly five minutes. It's not much, but it's all you have. If you can be at the city limits by 8.37 p.m. sharp, you will have enough time to escape before the security systems are reactivated. Spread out when you're running. You'll be harder to find. And if they get one of you, then at least they won't get all of you. The Resistance has outposts all throughout the wild and the wasteland. We have set up posts where we will find you. Once you start running, do not stop under any circumstances. Save yourself and free yourself. Only then... Can you begin the real fight? We have food, we have shelter, we have weapons. We have the means to take our world back. We need people, people 
who are willing to fight and lay their lives on the line to make sure that what belongs to us is given back to us. This is Jim Gallup. If you are listening to this, you are the resistance. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barkey, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Lord Azrakal, and Arcadian. 